many of us think we know what love is. A lot of us probably have heard the, the word love within the relationship context, but, you know, six months down the line, four years down the line, we end up thinking that it was all a joke. It meant nothing. And we question why. Nine times out of ten, we put the blame on the other person, saying that it was their fake love and their lie that we fell for that made us feel like we were being loved. I don't think that's true. I always try and think of love like food. Think of your, your, the one person in your family that, who's cooking you love. You, you just love. In my case, it's my, my oma's cooking and my mother's cooking. I love my grandmother's cooking. It's the best. In my eyes, no one cooks better than my grandmother. So if she makes chicken pie, for example, and I taste five other chicken pies, I'll easily be able to say, that chicken pie is shit, that chicken pie is shit, that chicken pie is shit, that chicken pie is shit. This chicken pie that I tasted from my grandmother is the best. And you can double that amount and give me 20 chicken pies and I'll taste them all. And I'll still be able to say my grandmother's chicken pie is the best. All the others is nonsense. Because my grandmother has spent time perfecting something that she has owned and mastered. Therefore, it's not hard for me to... Figure out whether chicken pie is subpar or not up to my standard. And we all have that. With, with anyone in our family, we have a dish that we exceptionally love and we rate so much. And anyone that tries to dupe us, we will always taste it immediately, whether that's not the real thing. And we'll always stick to what we know is true. What have you viewed love in the exact same way? If you viewed love the way you view a good dish, you would never fall for a fool's promise of love. Ever. But you would only know what true love is if you worked on true love within yourself first. See, I view my almost chicken pie like me loving myself. If I spend years, 29 years, on constantly loving myself, learning how to love myself, learning how to spend more than five minutes in front of a mirror and say, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. You enough, you enough, you enough, you enough. You don't need to compare yourself. You don't need to compare yourself. You are complete. You are complete. You are complete. You are the best version of yourself. If I truly love myself the way my grandmother has perfected a chicken pie, whenever a fool's promise of love is being suggested and presented to me on a plate, by merely smelling it, I'll be able to know whether that is a fake promise of love or true love. Because I know what true love smells like and feels like and tastes like. But if you have no reference of what good love tastes like and feels like and smells like, then how would you be able to know the difference between love being presented authentically and a fool's promise of love. You will only know at the end when you are sitting in the four corners of your mind, wavering through their social media, thinking about how they hurt you, how they broke you. You see them move forward in life. You, within a month, will hear them throw out the fake promises of love to a brand new person and then you would start thinking to yourself, but how? I don't believe when that happens, it's their fault. I truly believe that it is your fault. It's because you don't love yourself that you accept a fake version of love because you can't tell the difference between authentic love and fake love because you have no reference within you. So you accept any form of presented love. And you are the bigger fool than the fool with the promise of fake love. 
for falling for that. And the fool that presents fake love knows it once you fall for it. Because they know they don't love you. They themselves probably don't understand the, the meaning of love. If there's anything I've learned is that love is an ever constant, effortless presence. It never switches off. Love is, with, the, with a lot of us, always displayed very easily and demonstrated very easily when things go right. When you're on a date, when you're watching movies, during intimate sessions, love easily gets distrib distributed and, and thrown around the word, just always. But how many times have you ever heard love when things aren't going right? How many times have you ever heard the word I love you when shit is not going right? When you are arguing, when you are shouting, when you are, you know, v verbally abusing each other, emotionally destroying each other within a relationship. How many times have you ever then heard the word love? It's nearly as if love just switches off. And only when things calm down, if they calm down, does it get thrown again, as thrown into the mix again. But normally it gets thrown into the mix as a manipulative tool. So it's like a hook on a bait thrown in when the waters is calm and then slowly lures you in because they know that the word love is what they can use to, to, to bait you in. So when they use the word love at the right time, they can use this fake idea of love to allure you back into where they want you. The fool's promise of love. I cannot ever blame myself for falling for the idea of love. I've been in a relationship where I heard the word love so many times, but the person who said it literally has destroyed me and hurt me immensely. I mean, a week after breaking up with this person, you see statuses like, um, I've got options. And I'm like, wow, this is the person that claimed to love me literally a week ago. And then a week later, I've got options. A month later, they feel intimate and sexual affiliations with another man immediately, you know. Should I be upset with them? No, I shouldn't be upset with her. There's, there's no, it doesn't make sense to be upset with that which was fake always. See, they remain true to their nature and will always remain true to their nature. It is when I try to construct an idea of what I expect from them based on fakeness. Fake love that was presented, that I fell for. That is the true problem, not them. See, a person who presents that kind of love will always remain that person. So when you go out and you go and, you know troll through their social media you meet them in a social space three months after the situation you will find them where you found them and they would have found a new victim to lure into that which they call love but is truly just emptiness a hollow place a person with no love is a hollow place an empty place so there's always room for more it's like a cave and you get to knock and you just hear reverberations all around you. It's a hollow place because it's not filled with anything. There is no love that exists within anyone that presents a fool's promise of love. So who's the biggest fool? I am. I'm a fool because I do not love myself. I have not learned to love myself. Therefore, I would not know love when it stares me in the eye. I will always be a victim and prevalent for fake love being presented to me. And I will not ever be, not ever, but I won't be able to distinguish what quality love is. Just like, you know, if I didn't have a grandmother, I wouldn't know what a good chicken pie tastes like. When you start understanding love on that deep level a understanding that it is a constant and b understanding that love needs to be constructed within yourself 
a very powerful construct needs to be built within yourself. Only then will you be able to recognize whether love is true and love does not exist or reciprocate or activate rather within the existence of someone else being around you. That's very important to understand. Love should be a constant within yourself. Therefore, when someone leaves you, you do not feel like you are left empty. That cave is always filled. But when you place your love and you allow someone else to champion the idea of love within yourself, in their existence, it means you have no love. No love to offer. We think it's love, but it's not. More people need to love themselves to truly understand and embrace and enjoy love. Remember that love is an ever constant thing. Just like a mother who loves her son, even though the son has been convicted of crime, will always love her, her son nonetheless. You need to have that level of love when you say the word love. And if the person is not being able to say the word love in the hardest of times, nine times out of ten, you are with someone that does not truly love you. And the hardest thing to do is to walk away from fake love. Only because we don't have our love within ourselves, so we take anything we can find. Think about what I'm saying.